to another Take 5. I'm sure we've all seen that image of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, bowing and praying at this huge rock. That image has so much significance in it. First of all, Jesus bowing, kneeling to pray, showing his humility, a humility that's going to be on full display with the events that are about to take place. Him doing what scripture describes as becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. I wonder if maybe you and I should be approaching God's presence with a little more humility. Secondly, we see him leaning on the rock. What a picture for you and I. Jesus leaning on the rock. And now Jesus is our rock. He is the one we lean on. He is the one we rest upon. He is the one that can support us and hold us up. Then we also see Jesus praying to the Father from the heart. He is completely God, and yet he is also completely man. And his fleshly side did not want to face the things that he was about to face. I'm sure he knew the pain and the agony that was waiting for him. The punishment, the humiliation, the torture, the pain of dying on a cross. And then add to that the spiritual pain that he was about to go through taking all of the sins of all mankind on his shoulders, allowing his heavenly Father to pour out his wrath on him instead of on you and I. And so he prays from the heart, Father, if there is any other way, let this cup be taken from me. God wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from you from your heart. And then we also hear again from Jesus, his fleshly side. He is in such agony and anxiety over what is waiting for him that the word says that he sweat like drops of blood. Jesus knew what real suffering was. And he was about to experience it in a way that during his earthly walk he had not experienced before. And yet all of our cares... All of our cares that we have, they are big to us. Losing a loved one, watching a child go astray, hearing that prognosis from the doctor that we were hoping we wouldn't hear, those are big. And those do matter to God. And when we go into his presence in prayer, when we have that overwhelming anxiety, God does hear us. He does feel for us. He does have compassion and mercy on us. But then I love the way that Jesus ends that prayer. Father, not my will, but your will. Too many times we go to the rock and we cry out to God, God, rescue me from this. Get me out of this right now. End this suffering. When our ultimate prayer needs to be, God, I'm not sure why you've brought this into my life. I'm not sure why I'm having to experience what I'm having to experience. And yes, I do want out of it. Yes, if this cup can be taken away from me, I want that. But Father, not my will, but your will. You know why I'm going through this. You can give me the strength to make it. You can bring me out on the other side. And there is purpose in this. And you will receive the glory. That was at what was at the heart of Jesus' prayer. And that ought to be at the heart of our prayer prayer. So I want to encourage you today, whether it is a picture hanging in your house or whether you have to look it up online, I want you to find that image of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, leaning on the rock, bowing and praying. And I want you to think about what that should say to you and I and our relationship with Jesus. <laughs>